Hello everyone, welcome to our August 25th, 2010 Forex training here. It's in conjunction with FXDD and Forex Street. So very glad that you could join us today. Alright, so today uh, in a long series here that we've been doing for some time, which is so exciting, called Anticipating the Forex Trends, we'll have Greg Michalowski teaching the retail making one of his engagements or on his work he does on a number of different commentary pages, one of those being at FX Street. I'm Sean Powell, one of FXDD's national trainers. I'll be along for the ride typing in the chat window and helping Greg out as he does his presentation. We've got a couple things going on at FXDD that are worth talking about. One of those is our pole position bonus. Now, we sponsor the Red Bull Formula One team. You can get all the details at FXDD.com. So the next race we're going to be at is in Belgium this weekend. If the team does well, you get to do well when you open a trading account with us. And depending on how the team places, we offer a pole position bonus up to 8% on your funding in a trading account. The other thing we're doing is a trading contest where you have a chance to be a grand prize winner to one of the next Formula One races where you can attend with the, the Red Bull Racing Team. There's also $5,000 for travel and accommodations to be won along with 550 other cash prizes. You get all the details at fxdb.com on that. So, a couple things for housekeeping. So here's what we're going to do. It's going to be on market analysis and trading strategies. Greg will teach you some great phishing strategies on how you can find opportunities by asking questions in the chat panel. And you get more details on Greg at httpblog.fxstreet.com slash fxtrader-link. And uh, everyone should hear me and everyone should see my uh, PowerPoint with the uh, head slide that says Retail Foreign Ex Exchange uh, Traders' um, uh, count 10 to Most Common uh, Trading Mistakes uh, and How to Avoid Them. So a screen voice, okay. So let's uh, uh, get going. And... Uh, uh, before I remind everybody, uh, before I start, let me remind everybody of our risk disclaimer. I think Sean does probably uh, mention that in his introduction here, but uh, uh, we are not giving any uh, trading advice. We're just giving you some trading education to teach you how to fish for yourself, as uh, uh, Ed uh, likes to say, and then myself as well. Uh, but uh, I'm going to start off with a quote here, and this quote uh, goes like this. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. People can try to guess uh, who said this quote, by the way. Uh, I've lost almost 300 games. I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. Uh, any guesses out there? Three, two, one. You got it. Uh, and that's why I succeed. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, the MJ. Uh, we got a couple answers out there uh, who picked up Michael Jordan. And, and um, I picked that quote. Why? Because uh, trading is a lot like uh, <laughs> Gretzky, too. Um, trading is a lot like um, uh, sports. Um, I, I see a lot of similarities uh, between uh, an athlete uh, uh, and faili failing and traders who fail. Uh, and uh, I've failed. We've all failed. Uh, this is a humbling game that we play, if you want to call it a game. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, you have to, uh, you have to, uh, uh, strive to, uh, succeed and you have to, uh, try to keep yourself positive and you also have to try to, uh, fix the mistakes along the way. And Michael Jordan certainly, I'm sure, uh, uh, had a, made a lot of mistakes, uh, uh, through his progression as a, uh, basketball player and then as a professional basketball player and he, uh, is able to overcome them and that's why he succeeds and that's why you will, uh, succeed as a trader as well because you will have uh, mistakes along the way, and then you have to um, you have to overcome them. Uh, and um, why do I know uh, traders make uh, a lot of mistakes? And the reason is, historically speaking, most traders lose money. Therefore, there are a lot of trading mistakes that are being made. And how do I know a lot of mo most traders lose money? Uh, well, um, I've in the last ten years, I worked for FX Street, or not FX Street. Uh, now I, I partly work for FX Street, but the, now I work for FXDD. Uh, we are a, a broker uh, in the market, and we've seen the thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of customers uh, who come and go. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, and through that education that I see through uh, what um, customers do right and what uh, customers do wrong, I see a lot of uh, mistakes being made, and, and it's been this basis of uh, a lot of my uh, trading strategies, a lot of my trading analysis, a lot of my trading education uh, that goes on, and uh, and the uh, that this is uh, why I know that traders lose um, a lot of money. So um, th this uh, this today's report uh, or today's uh, webinar will actually uh, go through uh, what I consider the ten most common uh, trading mistakes. So uh, in the uh, uh, in a David Letterman format, I will list out the top ten 
uh, most uh, common trading mistakes. And then we'll go through each of them individually and take a look at them, uh, look at them a little bit more specifically so you can you know, kind of check off uh, in your own mind what kind of mistakes you make um, and uh, try to improve on them as well and try to correct them so you can succeed like Michael Jordan. Number 10 uh, is uh, most uh, retail traders think that trading is easy. Number 9, even though it's easy, uh, retail traders tend to overcomplicate uh, their trading and trading strategies. Number 8, uh, retail traders don't have a mission statement or a game plan. I ask you all, uh, you can raise your hand in your own uh, home. Do you have a mission statement or a game plan? Uh, if you don't, um, you know, maybe that may be one of the problems uh, with your trading, uh, if you're having a problem at, uh, with uh, your trading. So um, I'm going to give you uh, my mission statement, my game plan, uh, and uh, hopefully you will uh, use that as well. Number seven, uh, most retail uh, traders rely too much on fundamentals, too much on fundamental news as opposed to uh, technicals to go through that. Number six, uh, most retail traders uh, give uh, the, the oscillators too much credit, too much credit in your trading. Uh, probably some of you are probably thinking, what is this guy talking about? Uh, doesn't want to focus on fundamentals, doesn't want to focus on oscillators like the RSI and stochastics. Well, uh, I'll give you some reasons why uh, you shouldn't, why I think it is a mistake from a retail trader's perspective uh, and why it uh, can hurt your account value. Uh, number five, most retail traders don't define risk or they take uh, too much risk. Um, and uh, uh, number four, uh, most retail traders, if you target level on your trade, that's target a place where you're going to go uh, in the trade that you put on, that level is too far away oftentimes and as a result you uh, never get to it. Number uh, three, <coughs> excuse me, uh, most uh, retail traders exit without a reason. We do all this uh, work to enter a trade and we have all these reasons uh, to enter a trade in most uh, cases, uh, but uh, a lot of times uh, retail traders don't have a reason to exit. And as a result of that, uh, you don't tr tend to trade trends very well. And uh, trends are where you make the most amount of money uh, with the least amount of risk, believe it or not. You can also lose the most. In fact, not not can. You do lose the most amount of money uh, uh, when you trade against the trend, and that certainly is not um uh, Our uh, goal uh, as a trader is to lose the most amount of money. Our, our, our goal and our mission statement is to make the most amount of money. And number two, uh, most retail traders don't anticipate trends. There are ways you can anticipate trends. I don't have a crystal ball in front of me. Um, I don't know it all, but I do uh, know that there are uh, uh, clues that the market gives you allows you to anticipate a trend. And the common, most common uh, trading mistake that most uh, retail traders do is they Against the trend, you lose money. Uh, you know, choppy uh, uh, moving down, markets that move up and down. Uh, you, most uh, people have that buy low, sell high mentality down pat. But uh, to stay on a trend, it's very difficult for a lot of a uh, lot of uh, traders out there. So uh, let's uh, let uh, imagine that that's one event, and imagine also the time it takes for you to place your bet for them. Then, to, well, first to collect all the uh, chips off the off the board. Then you place your bet. Uh, and then they say, okay, we're going to spin the wheel, and they throw the wheel, the ball around the wheel, and then it you know, moves around there and f eventually falls into place. That's one event. It maybe takes a, you know, a couple minutes for it to complete uh, from uh, one minute to, uh, from one spin to the next. Uh, now put yourself in a trading uh, environment, and what people don't realize is that every time the price ticks from 30 to 31 in the euro, from 31 to 32, 32 to 33, 33 to 32. 32 to 31, um, uh, that is one event. That's like the spin of the roulette wheel. And what happens uh, is it's, um, it's constantly going on. And you can have uh, 30 spins of the roulette wheel in 30 seconds if, you, uh, if the market's really ticking. Uh, and what does that do to your mind? That makes uh, your mind uh, very um, you know, uh, confused and, and muddies your mind and causes all sorts of uncertainty and fear. Uh, if, if imagine if you had 30 bets at the roulette wheel in 30 seconds, what you would do. You would leave that table. You wouldn't uh, return to that uh, casino ever again. Well, trading is like that. And uh, it, it's um, always moving up and down, up and down, up and down. And each of those events uh, is a uh, another, uh, 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 you know, if you will, uh, bet on the roulette wheel. 
Uh, and uh, so you as a trader have to realize that it is not that easy. It isn't uh, the market moving up 50% uh, of the time or down 50% of the time. It is more than that. It is a business. It is controlling fear. It is controlling your risk. It is defining risk. It is being able to uh, accept the risk and then let the, uh, disperse your fear and allow the market to move in the direction uh, given uh, the tools that you use uh, to analyze the market. I'm talking about technical tools, folks, uh, not necessarily fundamental tools. We'll get that in a, get to that in a second. All right, the next uh, 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 most common mistake is that most uh, retail traders think that even though uh, it's easy uh, through number 10, uh, they tend to overcomplicate uh, your trading. Uh, it's human nature. It's human nature to think that the more you know, the better you will become. Uh, and, but it's not necessarily true, uh, in trading. Now, I'm not saying that knowledge isn't good. You should read Ed's book. You should read my book. You should read <coughs> other, uh, excuse me, other traders, um, uh, books, um, and, and try to educate yourself on what, um, is out there and what, uh, is, what is the proper way, uh, to look at the market. But after you do that, you have to downshift and, and focus on what is important? What is going to make you money as a trader? And that is the um, what um, uh, retail traders um, tend to make a mistake is they think that, well, if they just pile on and pile on and pile on um, all these different ideas uh, in, into their charts, uh, they will have the, uh, the answer. And uh, I put up this chart here because if, uh, if any of you out there has something that looks like this, you're probably overcomplicating your your trading. Now, this is obviously maybe a little bit of an exaggeration, uh, but um, uh, you know, it, it's not uncommon for people to have RSIs and MACDs or stochastics. It's not uncommon to have Bollinger Bands. This uh, colored area is an Ichimoku cloud. We have trend lines. We have Fibonacci retracements in here. We have other moving average lines uh, in there, uh, the red and the green line. Uh, and uh, all of that, uh, goes into your mind and it tends to overcomplicate uh, your thinking. Uh, you, you, you see bullish signs, you see bearish signs, and what is uh, what does that do uh, to your mind? It overcomplicates. It makes it uh, uh, it makes you more uh, fearful, and fear is the trader's worst enemy. You have to, in my book, you have to steer clear of fear. It's a, it's a hokey type of, of little rhyme that I use, uh, but um, most traders, uh, if you if you have fear. You're not going to trade well. Uh, think of anything that you have fear in, uh, and you're not going to do well in it. Uh, Michael Jordan doesn't have fear taking that last shot. So if he did, he would ne he, he would not have lasted as long as he as he has. So he doesn't have that fear. He has that you know he steers clear of fear, and you as a trader have to steer clear as well. Uh, that same chart. This is how my chart looks. Uh, just to give you an idea, um, I have a, a you know a, a, a trend line in there. I have two moving averages. Uh, I use Fibonacci retracement levels, uh, and um, th those are the three tools that I use. And I'll analyze a market in this very uh, simplistic way. I have points one and two here, um, and that allows me to draw a trend line. Uh, and then um, uh, 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 th this blue line right here, this is my 100 uh, uh, bar moving average, and this is an hourly chart, so this is a 100-hour moving average. And that's my trigger. If the price moves above the 100-hour moving average, it gives me a buy buy signal. Now, I also, um, because I drew this trend line here, uh, uh, the the, uh, the market does come down, and this gives me a level to buy against. Why? Because I have the trend line support there, and and uh, successful traders will trade around what I call these borderline levels, and I do too. Uh, these are levels where it's bullish on one side and bearish on the other side. And in this case, we have the uh, trend line coming up, and, and and a trader who would buy against this level would put, simply put your risk below probably this 38.2% retracement of this move to the upside here. This is another one of the tools that I use. It's one of the three tools that I use. Uh, and so anyone who bought against the trend line would put their stop just a oh, 10 or 15 pips below the 129.63 level. And if you're right and the market moves back above the 100 bar moving average, you get to benefit from this move to the upside. Is this complicated? No. Is it simple? No. Uh, it, uh, or is it simple? Yes, it is simple. I got my, my words mixed up there. Uh, but, uh, and it, it's very, uh, you could use, use this, these, uh, you know, you can simplify your trading 
by using just you know three simple tools trend line moving averages this is a hundred this is a 200 and the Fibonacci retracements so what happens as we progress along this chart we come back down to the hundred bar moving average we hold that support break below it and where do we come down to the trend line once again we come and test the trend line does this give you another buying opportunity of course it does look what we're against here as well this old hot this old high right here uh, so your risk on this trade is oh well if we move below that old high right there this is the euro dollar this is uh, this is, uh, you know, this happens often in the market. Market uh, finds support against that level, moves back above the 100, confirms move back up to the upside, and we're up back trading around the 132, 31 level uh, from the 131, uh, 50 ish type level or, or even below that level, about the 30 level. Uh, so we've moved another 100 pips to the upside, come back down again, move down, test the line again, use 100, test the line again, move back up again, and it's 7. Finally, we move below uh, the 100 and the, the trend line uh, converge at the same point, and the market starts its corrective move to the downside. Uh, we get this is the FOMC meeting announcement uh, where the market moves sharply higher, uh, and what happens here, um, uh, the uh, uh, the price uh, ends up in what I call in between the goalposts. Uh, this is where the price is in between the 100 uh, uh, hour simple moving average. This is an hourly chart, and the 200 hour moving average. Uh, and uh, this is indicating that the market is non-trending or it's, it's confused. It doesn't know which way it wants to go. Either we're going to break to the upside or we're going to break to the downside. Um, when, it, when it breaks to the downside, I anticipate a move to the downside. Why? Because y your risk is limited. Uh, your risk is if the market moves above the 100-hour 100, 100 moving average, plus the market is unsure at this point, but it wants to move away from this area and start its move to the downside, and that's what happens. It starts trend to the downside so everything in this chart is very simple um, it's um, it's utilizing uh, three different tools uh, it's not over complicated my mind is clear and I think you uh, as a trader can also use this uh, strategy and clear clear your mind of all the clutter and uh, 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 um, take the complication out of your trading keep it simple so that you can steer clear of fear uh, okay, so let's uh, move on to number eight. And number eight is you don't have, uh, most retail traders don't have a mission statement or a game plan. And I asked you earlier if anyone had a mission statement or a game plan. And those people who may be um, uh, uh, brave enough may want to type in your mission statement so we all can see or game plan. Uh, but I will uh, share with you my mission statement and my game plan uh, for trading. My mission statement is simply this to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk, to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. Um, traders, you're in this business to trade and make money. So uh, does it mean that uh, uh, you're going to make a million dollars, you're going to take $5,000, make $10,000 or $20,000? No, you can, you're going to make, you're going to strive to make the most amount of money that you possibly can. Uh, and the, uh, and the, given your ability, given what you know, how you, how you know, how you trade. I got an email from someone this morning uh, who said that uh, they want to listen to my uh, webinars. They want to subscribe to my uh, email distribution list. And they said, you know, that, that they're not, um, uh, they are not, um, uh, uh, they're a beginner in trading. And I said, well, you know, I'm giving a webinar here today uh, at FX Street. Uh, come on in and listen because I'm going to tell you the 10 common mistakes that people trade do. Um, and uh, and uh, hopefully it'll save you some uh, some dough because we all know you 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 know most people lose money when they first start to trade and they have to go through the school of hard knocks. Uh, so, uh, but you can you can learn to make money. You can increase your skill. You can um, uh, uh, learn uh, to um, uh, how you can limit your risk, limit your fear, and allow you to uh, make the most amount of money. Um, now, the least amount of risk, most people think that uh, the old risk-reward ratio, well, if I don't take risk, Greg, I'm not going to make a lot of money. That's not true, um, uh, folks. Um, you you do need to take risk in order to trade, but if you take too much risk, you're going to lose too much money. You're going to lose a lot of money. So what you have to uh, do is try to focus on uh, keeping your risk as low as possible. Uh, that's going to make you the most amount of money. So the question becomes, uh, how do you do that, Greg? And that gets into the game plan. The mission statement gives you your overall view of what you should uh, be tr trying to do 
as a trader. And the game plan uh, tells you how you're going to go about doing it. And that game plan is to trade the trends and keep fear to a minimum. Why do you want to trade the trends? So the reason why you want to trade the trends is uh, th that um, uh, trends are directional in nature uh, and they also move pretty quickly. A trend to the upside is going to make you a lot of money if you're long in a very quick fashion. But you're not going to have that fear. Why are you going to have fear if you trade with the trend? Because you're not losing money. You're profiting. You should have less fear if you're making money. The, we the worst the, the worst you can do if you're on a trend type trade is lose some of your profit. You should always be trailing your stop uh, after each successive leg to the upside so that you never lose money. And you may also look to take some profit at key levels, key targets along the way. And this um, is how traders make the mo most money. And think of the opposite of trading uh, with the trend. The opposite is you trade against the trend. And I've, as I've already mentioned, if you trade against the trend, you're going to lose money the fastest. Th that's the quickest way to go broke is to trade against the trend because it's directional in nature and it moves fast. So uh, too many retail traders trade against the trend. You have to steer. You have to start thinking uh, that I, ha I only have one choice as a trader. It's either trade the trend or don't trade at all. And the, and the and the other thing about if you if you don't trade a trend, uh, so uh, if you trade against a trend, we know that's bad. If you don't trade a trend, uh, that uh, and let's say you stay out of the market uh, and you watch the market move five or six hundred pips in the directional move, uh, like it uh, did recently from one twenty seven thirty three uh, to one thirty three thirty three, and you weren't on any bit of that trend to the upside. Think of the opportunity cost that you just missed out as a trader. Uh, so you're in this game to uh, uh, to make money and the, uh, to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. You have to look for those opportunities to trade the trend and make sure that you don't uh, lose that um, that opportunity uh, because that also messes with your mind as well uh, and uh, makes you less um, more fearful uh, about your trading if you just miss a 600 pip move. Uh, the other thing is you have to keep fear to a minimum. We've already talked about uh, fear. Fear is a trader's worst enemy. You have to try to keep fear to a minimum by uh, uh, things like defining risk. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. Uh, number seven. Number seven is uh, uh, most retail traders rely too much on fundamental uh, news. Uh, talking fundamentals make traders feel smart. Relying on fundamentals will make traders feel poor. Um, too many of us, uh, when someone asks us what they think about the market, will give give a whole long dissertation about what uh, the fundamentals are saying in the market. Um, for myself, when someone asks me what I think about the market, I start to tell them about the risks of the market. Well, as long as the market stays below the 100-hour moving average, uh, I think the bias is to the downside. That's what I rely on. It may be boring. It may not get me on CNBC, who talks uh, constantly about fundamentals and very little about technicals. Uh, but it is the way that I am going to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. Uh, and uh, and that is uh, the, the only way I'm going to be able to do that is follow the tools of the market that's going to tell me that a trend is occurring, that the price is below the 100-hour moving average, so the market should go down. And uh, if, I can, if I can follow those rules, follow those technical rules and not pay attention to the fundamentals, I'll always be ahead of the game. I'll always, always be ahead of the game. Because why? Uh, because the fundamentals, uh, oftentimes, they get uh, they can get out of uh, sync uh, with the market. And also, any one of us, whether we're individuals, institutions, or whatever, do not know all the fundamentals that are going on at any one time. The fundamentals are this big cauldron of all this information that goes in a big, huge pot. And we may think that we know what the fundamentals are saying, but there may be, uh, for instance, a merger that's causing the uh, Canadian dollar to uh, be weak or expensive. There may be a hedge fund uh, that has uh, some business to do, and you don't see that fundamental piece of, uh, of trading that's going on. There may be a central bank that has uh, some uh, flows of funds that they have to uh, uh, move in and out of the market. You don't know that, and most, even most of the institutionals don't know about that, only a few do. There may be repatriation of funds from McDonald's back to the United States or from to a, to 
Toyota from the United States back to Japan, or some hedging of uh, of uh, currency exposure from Japanese uh, 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 corporations uh, as the dollar yen continues to get weaker, and all these things go into the, what is called the fundamental pot, and uh, uh, they uh, uh, if uh, uh, if you're focused on uh, something that the market is not focused on, you're going to miss out on a potential move. So what you have to do is follow the price. The price is what everyone in the world sees. Everyone can look at a chart and see the price and understand that that's where it is. That's where it is right now. And we have transparency uh, from retail traders to institutional traders. And because of that, you now have you now know where the market is. And then what you do as a trader is apply tools to that price in order to determine whether the bias is positive or negative, like we did in that chart where we had trend lines, we had moving average lines, we had Fibonacci's. That tells you what the bias is to the market, and you have to rely on that. So um, don't rely too much on fundamentals. Uh, tr try to rely on technicals. Number six, uh, most retail traders give oscillators too much credit. Oscillators like relative strength index and stochastics that give oversold and overbought um, conditions cause traders to trade against the trend. It causes you to trade against the trend. Uh, so um, what, you know, and we know that if you trade against the trend, that's the quickest way to the poorhouse. Uh, you don't always want to trade with the trend. And I'm going to show you an example here. Uh, this is of the euro dollar when the market was uh, moving uh, to the upside here in the uh, month of uh, July. This is an hourly chart. And this is uh, showing the RSI down here at the bottom end of the scale here. Now, when the when RSI tends to go above 70, most retail traders and most people will say that the market is getting an overbought conditions. Well, that overbought condition occurred at this 128.10 uh, level. Uh, and uh, so someone who uh, may have seen that the market hit a high here and then started to come down during this um, hour, uh, uh, hourly bar right here might have been like, oh, well, we're getting overbought here just like we did right here. Uh, it's time for the market to uh, uh, either non-trend or, or correct uh, from that move. So if you sold the market here, what would have happened? Well, we saw the market move and move and continue the trend to the upside here. Market moves all the way up to a level of 130.06. Um, just uh, this is uh, less than a day later or about a day later. Uh, so you sold at 128.10 because the market was oversold. The market are overbought. The market continues to get overbought during this uh, period right here. And now you're sitting at a position that's at 130.06. So then you finally get to the correction move to the downside. Do we ever get back back to your starting level? No, we never get back. And then so you say to yourself, honey, you know, I haven't slept for a day and a half now. I'm going to put my stop in uh, when the uh, 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 at, if the market takes out the old high here. But I think that the market is overbought. We're due for a correction, honey. So uh, the RSI told me so. Uh, so I'm going to stay with this trade. And what happens? The market continues to go higher and higher. And what do you do? You stop yourself out when the market goes above the old high because, you know, this RSI doesn't work. And you've had three days of, of uh, no sleep uh, as you watch the market waiting for it to correct to the downside. And then the market starts to correct to the correction to the downside. So RSIs and oscillators like this do not work in trending markets. And what is our game plan, folks? To trade the trends. So what I, why should I use a, a, um, a oscillator that's going to take me out of a trend or potentially take me out of a trend or not to be able, uh, or not able to define my risk um, and, uh, and, and, and keep my fear to a minimum? I don't. I, so I've learned to put that away, to not rely on it. Am I saying that you shouldn't look at it? I can't tell you not to look at an RSI. But what I can tell you is don't use it for your reason to trade, your primary reason to trade. Use other tools that give you um, an unambiguous trading decision. The, the market is above the 100-hour moving average. I'm bullish. The market went below the 100-hour moving average. I'm bearish. That is a, what I call an unambiguous trading tool, a, a oscillator, and a relative strength index is what I call an ambiguous trading tool. It just gives you overbought and oversold conditions. It doesn't tell you uh, that you should be long or short, and that is dangerous, especially in a trading market. So most retail traders rely too much on oscillators. I say don't rely on the oscillators, folks. Uh, keep it out of your trading plan. Uh, you'll be more successful. Rule five, uh, don't, uh, most retail traders don't define risk, um, and they take too much risk. I have two rules in trading uh, in regard to, tr uh, to risk. 
If you don't know your risk, do not do the trade. And that, I mean specific risk of the trade. If you don't know where the, uh, what, uh, where you should get out, make, and that, and also make sure that that, where you should get out makes sense from a technical trading uh, perspective. That is, you know, you move above a trend line or below a trend line. That is a reason to do a trade. Uh, that defines your risk. So if you don't know your risk, don't do the trade. And the second thing is if the risk is too great. If your risk is too great, do not do the trade. Uh, there's one guarantee that I will make you, uh, folks, and that is there will, there will always be another trade. Uh, so if you, if the risk is, if you do not know your risk, don't do the trade. If the risk is too great, don't do the trade. And here I use as an example that same chart that we looked at, uh, before. And, uh, uh, the tools that I use, um, are designed to be what I call unambiguous trading tools. So that means if the price is above the hundred uh, or, or above this trend line, the bias is bullish. If the price goes below the trend line, the bias is bearish. So in in all these instances where against the uh, moving average, against the trend line, against the Fibonacci uh, level, um, all of them are unambiguous trading tools. That is, if the move above the hundred bar moving average, it should be bullish. If you move below the 100 bar moving average, it should be bearish. But in this case, what do we run into? We run into something that says if we're above the, the trend line, the market is uh, is bullish. So during these parts right here, the market has a decision to make. Does it want to go lower or does it want to go higher? Is it going to follow the 100 or is it going to follow the trend line? And um, traders will uh, use these areas as levels to uh, buy against or um, or sell if the market should break through. So in this case right here, the market came down to this level. We went through this example before, uh, and, and the market found buyers against that level. Why? Because the risk is very limited. The market moves below this trend line, get out. Uh, and and uh, in this case, the market moved back above the 100 and then started to trend to the upside. All these levels along these key uh, key uh, uh, tools that you use are levels to uh, that define your risk. Do you know what your risk is here on this trade right here? Yes, your risk is if the price probably goes below this line, maybe even goes below this this line right here. You're risking that amount at the worst case scenario to possibly, um, you know, make something uh, take out the highs and move to uh, higher highs. Um, I personally would probably risk this amount right here. The difference between here and right here is that a lot of risk to uh, traders. No, and if the, the reward was over 100 uh, 100 pips on this move to the upside here. So that's a good risk reward trade. Is this a, uh, a low risk trade? Yeah, the market, uh, you know, uh, your risk is if the price goes below this line. Now, there's probably an economic number that came out here, so your risk is a little bit different. So, but let's just use this example. Um, at this point right here, folks, the market is how many times have we checked the trend line? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different times. Is seven times enough for you to think that if it broke below that trend line, uh, the, 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 uh, momentum might be to the downside? It is for me. We broke the below the trend line. We broke below the 100 hour moving average. What is the risk of this trade? Can I define my risk? Yeah, my risk is right to this line right here. Market breaks through, breaks through the 200, comes down all the way down to the 130, 80 from 132. These are, these are about 200, 150, 100 pips uh, of trading with very little risk. That's what good traders do is they define their risk by using tools uh, and using uh, simple tools that give you a bullish or bearish bias. And if they are able to do that and define their risk, guess what happens to their fear? Your fear goes down. If you know you're risking 20 pips on a trade, should your fear be a lot less than if you're risking 50 or 60 or 80 pips on a trade? Yes, it should. That's the name of the game. Disperse your fear, get rid of your fear, and allows you to trade the trends much better uh, either to the upside or to the downside. Number four, we only have uh, four more to go, and I have about oh, 10 minutes or so to go. So number four is if a target, uh, if traders target a level, it is often too far away. Traders should be real, to, you should uh, use realistic levels that make sense to you as far as targets go. Um, if you're on a trend, what do we know about trends? They step up or they step down. They don't go in a straight, straight line. So what I like to tell traders is that you need to focus on targets in the uptrend. Focus on traders uh, or targets on the downtrend uh, in your trading. And uh, what I what I mean uh, by that um, is that um, uh, is that if you're if the, if the market is moving uh, higher, uh, you want to 
uh, be able to get to the next target level. It might be a moving average line. It might be a Fibonacci level. It might be a retracement uh, uh, level. And uh, if you get past that exit or that target on on uh, that directional move, uh, then the, the uh, trend continues in that uh, in that direction. What I often see uh, traders do uh, is uh, something like this: they'll read an article in the Wall Street Journal that says the hedge funds hedge funds try a career trade against the euro. Now, in this article, the euro was at 135, uh, so it was pretty well up there, and they were they were right um, eventually. Uh, but in the article. They imply that uh, they're looking for a career trade with the euro move down to parity. How many people heard about the euro going to parity when the market was uh, at higher levels? We heard it at 118, uh, 119. We heard it at 120. We heard it at 122, 23, 24, 25. It's still going to parity. It goes all the way up to 133. Is that a painful corrective move? Sure it is. We, you know, those people who traded against that trend from 118.76 up to 133.33 certainly know the pain of that type of move and it was all because well they started to think you know that the uh the euro had a, uh, was going to go to parity let's just get the euro down to 115 or 112 or 110 why do we have to target parity uh in the trade uh most retail traders try to put their targets too far ahead of themselves and this is what happened uh in that trade this is the day that that article came out and although the market went lower over the next couple days here uh, what uh, uh, we never got a close below the closing level on that day. The, cl the closing level on that day was 135.45. I think the market went down 90 pips on this day right here. But each of the days over the next 14 days closed above that level. So you, as a retail trader who listened to that article, had to watch the market move 275 pips in the opposite direction um, and endure that fear and pain before the market that uh, eventually started to come down. Well, that's difficult for most retail traders to do. Uh, so um, what you have to do is is uh, follow your tools and make sure that, that your tools say the market is bullish or the market is bearish. If you're looking for the market to go down, guess what uh, the 100-hour moving average is doing during this part? It's, it's going up. It's moving higher. And so you should be out of the market until the market tells you the price is moving to the downside. Uh, this is a more recent example of... Uh, an article that appeared on July 27th, uh, but at some point, fundamentals re reassert their sway on the exchange rates. There's that word, fundamentals. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that they uh, started to uh, believe that the fundamentals were going to reassert themselves. They're probably saying the same fundamentals at 121 as they were at the, the uh, at this uh, current level, up at the 129, 130 level. And uh, it, I, I blocked out the name, but it said uh, so-and-so expects the euro to end 2010 at parity 08 or 108 above an earlier call for parity, but still well off the current level of 129. Folks, if you're if you're looking for the market to go to 108 from 129.80, let's see if you can get the move from 129.80 to 126 first, and then 125, 124. You have to do it in steps. Don't look for the big uh, uh, exit um, at the uh, final destination. Uh, look for the interim uh, moves along the way, and that'll allow you to control your fear and to keep your uh, keep you in the game, and allow you to trade the trend on the whole way down. Believe me, if the market goes to 108, the technicals are going to tell you that the bias is to the downside, and that's where you're going going to go. So just follow what the technicals are telling you, uh, and you will find that move down to 108. But don't start thinking that we're going to 108 before we get to 125 first. You got to get there first. You have to reach those exits along the highway. And uh, uh, here's uh, uh, here's an example of the euro versus U.S. dollar. Of course, you know at this point right here, uh, the market uh, broke through the 38.2 percent retracement, the trend line, uh, and the um, uh, the um, uh, moving average, 100 uh, day moving average at the same point, and the market started to move to the downside. Next target uh, was uh, 126.05. Uh, what was uh, where did we get through yesterday? We went through that 126.05 level, and what was the low here today? Uh, one, I think 126.07 uh, here was one of the uh, low uh, points on, on the uh, trading day. I put that up here. Uh, the uh, low came in at uh, 120, oops, 126.08. Uh, so the market did uh, uh, move down and found support at this 126.05 level. 
Uh, and so, um, you know, in order for the market to continue its bearish ways, guess what? We have to get through this 50% retracement. If we don't get through that 50% retracement and move back through the 100-day moving average, guess what, the, guess what the bias does? It moves back to the upside. So you have to follow your targets, and your targets have to be realistic. And then if it gets through, it allows you to continue on that trend to the downside. Don't start thinking about one, uh, uh, parity 08. Uh, when we're way up here at 127, 128, 126 levels uh, in the euro versus U.S. dollar. Uh, number three, uh, most uh, retail traders don't anticipate a trend. To enter a trend and stay on a trend, it is important to try and anticipate a trend. If you can anticipate a trend, you have a better chance to stay on the trend. And I use a baseball uh, analogy. Uh, and how many times have you heard baseball players say after he hits a home run to win the game at the end of the game that uh, they were uh, looking for uh, for the same fastball, looking for a pitch, and they hit it out? Um, traders and baseball players think alike. You, if you can anticipate a trend, you have a better chance of catching that trend. If you can anticipate a fastball in baseball, you have a better chance of hitting that fastball out of the park. And that's what uh, athletes, again, athletes and traders have in common. Good traders are able to anticipate a trend. And I show you an example here of where the 100 and the 200 uh, bar moving average on this five-minute chart are converged, going sideways at the same level of the price. And what I like to say is when these three things occur at the same time, it's called three is a crowd. That means that the uh, the market is non-trending. The market is looking to trend because what do non-trending markets do? They eventually trend. And this is an, often a key setup that traders look for, successful traders look for, to anticipate a trend. They don't know if it's going to go up or they don't know if it's going to go down, but they do know it's not going to stay at this position. It's going to move away. The price, the three is a crowd. The price is going to move away from the moving averages. So if you see this type of setup, you can anticipate a trend. And if you can anticipate a trend, you're better able to ride the trend to the downside because the trend is not going to last 30 or 40 pips. It's going to last a little bit more. And in this case, the market moves from 132.81 all the way to 133, 31, 33, uh, heads down uh, in a nice, clear fashion. When we get to this 100-bar 100, 100 moving average, what does it do? It has another opportunity to sell. You sell against it here. Why? What's the risk? Oh, 10 or 15 pips above that line. If the market should go above that line, you would get out of the trade. But if it continues to the downside, you get this whole reward to the downside. Eventually, the, the trend ends when the market price moves above that 100 bar moving average. Anticipate a trend looking at the 100 bar moving average going sideways, or looking at the 200 bar moving average converging with the price, and then a trend to the downside ensues. All you have to do is get on that trend. Uh, down to the final two. Uh, most retail traders exit without a reason. Uh, we put all this effort into finding reasons to get into a trade, and oftentimes we will take ourselves out of the trade, out of the trend early, uh, because we have what I call the fear of success. The fear of the success is when you exit a trade before it's time without a reason. You don't want the, the, the market to take away your profit, so you exit the trade, and that is often a dangerous thing that a lot of retail traders uh, do. And the example of that um, is this: uh, when, uh, when uh, here is the euro versus U.S. dollar, and this is again current. This is that OMC interest rate decision. And I spoke about how the price was in between uh, these two moving averages. Uh, when the market broke through the 200 bar moving average, it gave you a signal to sell. Now, what a lot of traders do out there who are not anticipating a trend. Will, um, they will look to uh, exit. Um, uh, will, will look to sell at this point because they see the break of the moving average. But when the price gets down here and they see support against this level right here, uh, this old low, and the, and they see a little correction up here, they will often buy at that level. Why do they buy at that level? Uh, because they they are not anticipating a trend. For myself, I was anticipating a trend. The market was moving sideways up here, it moved down through the the uh, 200 bar moving average. We had that silly FOMC uh, interest rate uh, decision here that caused the market to go up. It stayed within the goalpost here for a little bit, then started to move down. I am looking for something a little bit more than 50 pips. Uh, but uh, most traders have this fear of success. They take their profit. 
They go onto the message boards. They tell everybody how they had, they made 50 pips. And what happens next? The market starts to trend down. Most retail traders do this. The market moves below the trend line and then corrects back up to this low. What are you doing? You're buying. Why are you buying? Because the market is now um, 70 pips up below where you bought it up here. It's cheaper. It gives you another opportunity to buy at a cheap level. You just made 50 pips. Told everybody how you bought uh, bought the dip and the market was going to go back higher on the message boards. So you start to buy here and the market trends to the downside. It gets to another level. You buy another level thinking the market's going to correct higher because it's oversold at this point. It goes down. It corrects a little bit. Now you're feeling a little bit better. It goes back down again. You buy the last time. You get this consolidation. You break through the low and you stop yourself out at the bottom. <clears throat> um, traders make this mistake all all the time. Uh, they they need to uh, understand that uh, uh, you know that they um, uh, a common mistake is that uh, people exit without a real reason. There wasn't a real reason to exit here. They were. They, you should be anticipating the trend. You should give the market a little bit more re reason, uh, uh, or a little bit more reason than uh, than the market just moved 50 pips uh, when you're anticipating a trend. Like give it to the break even at the beginning of the trade. Let the market, let the trend develop through the downside, and you'll be more successful. Uh, the final thing that um, I'm going to speak about, or or that I really have alluded to a lot in this uh, presentation, is that most retail traders trade against the trend. Uh, and I'm going to leave it with the, just these comments that the most money is made trading with the trends. Most money is trading, uh, is lost trading against the trends. Uh, trends are directional. Trends move fast. Trends tend to correct, but corrections and trends tend to be predictable. 38.2 Fibonacci uh, retracements, moving average lines, trend lines. We've seen it. I've seen it time and time again. And finally, the benefit from the trend is gone when it is done. So don't trade against the trends. Don't trade against the trends and be more successful. Um, if anyone wants a copy of this PowerPoint, I'll be happy to send it to you. Um, if you want to open an account with FXDD, I'll be happy to do that too. Or if you want to put me on your, uh, uh, get put on my daily Forex email distribution list or ask any questions or make any comments, send me an email at greg at fxdd.com. Um, and also, um, I do have a book uh, coming out next year. Uh, it's going to be called Tacking the Forex Trends where we're going to uh, talk a lot about what we talked about here today in addition to more. So uh, uh, thank you very much. If there's any questions, I'll take them, but I'm running out of time. I know that. Okay, thank you so much, Greg. That was a great presentation, one of my favorites so far. Hopefully everybody else has enjoyed it as well. Uh, really solid information on that. Uh, so we did have a question here coming in from Len, and uh, I guess maybe this will be the last question he answered, Greg, in terms of time. Uh, do you target the previous day's highs and lows? Is this one of the tools you use to determine, I guess, where a breakout occurs? Len, um, target the uh, previous day's highs and lows. But um, that 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 can be a target. Yes, I mean, um, it, it, what I what I really try to use, uh, however, is um, I'll, I'll try to use um, uh, the the tools that I use. At, oops, hold on a second. Let me get out of here. Good. All right. Um, what what I will try to uh, target, uh, Len. Uh, uh, is uh, different uh, either trend lines, Fibonacci retracements, moving average lines. So just take a look at this daily chart. Um, when the market breaks through this 100-day moving average, my target is the 50% retracement line. When the, mar the, the market has, you know, it's wander and it moves down to that 50% retracement line, uh, that becomes a target. I have another line in here that I call a horizontal line or what I call a remembered line, and this would be another target for the uh, euro versus U.S. dollar. And what is that? That's just old lows. That's old lows. You know, we had a low here at 22 level. And uh, when, when the market took off from this level, we kind of based at that 22 level. So that becomes what I consider a ne the next target to the upside. Um, I, I will target the 61.8% retracement. Then I'll go to even like the, the hourly chart, uh, Len, and I'll, I'll look at the hourly chart and see if there's any clues uh, that this hourly chart gives as far as a potential tar targets. Um, or uh, levels where um, I, I would look uh, for the market to move, and I and I you know you can see I have a line in here at that one one twenty six oh five five level or really oh four here, and you can see how the market came down to that target level, and we found support there, we found the buyers there. Why? Because everyone knows it's there, it's there, and then when it breaks through, we go down for one bar, and then the next bar. This is a this is an hourly chart. The next bar we we take off from that level. Today, when the market comes flying down here, where do we stop? We stop at that 
08 level. That becomes a target when the market um, you know, uh, fails up here. Uh, you know, on the upside, you know, so the market bounces off this 05 level. What are target levels on the upside? Well, I put my Fibonacci from this high to the low, and my Fibonacci becomes a 38.2% target. Where does the market go? It goes a couple pips up to the top side and then starts to come down. Where do we come down to? We come down to this old low right here. Uh, these, these are like, this is what I call the dance of traders. Um, uh, you know, where, where, um, where the the market is in a rhythm uh, and it and it moves from level to level along the way and it, and if you have too many indicators on your charts you never can see these levels but if you start to think real you know and keep things simple by putting trend lines by putting fibonacci's by looking at the moving average lines you start to see these key levels you start to be able to draw this horizontal line here and you can see the low here. You can see the low here. You can see the highs here. You can see the break to the upside. You can see, you start to see these things at the 81 level, the, the lows here, the lows here, the highs here, the lows here. And you're more in touch with the market. You're more in tune with the market. And then you're just looking for the trend. You're looking for that trend type move. Uh, it gave a nice uh, indication up here at the top, and the market trended to the downside. This type of market that we're seeing in here is not all that great. We're not really trending, so you kind of have to go from point to point. But from from you know uh, on a trend move to the downside, you're starting to look up. You're looking for those uh, longer term uh, targets to reach. So I hope that answers your question. I appreciate everyone coming in. Um, I thank FX Street for. Uh, you know, providing me the opportunity to give this uh, presentation. Um, and I wish everybody a good fortune in your trading. If you do uh, want to uh, send me an email or, or get this uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation, send me an email at greg at fxtv.com. I also have a, a daily uh, Forex uh, email distribution list. Send me an email. Just say, put me on the distribution list, and I'll be happy to send it to you. Thanks again uh, to everybody out there. Have a great day. Uh, we'll talk to you next time.